one of the main uh, missions of the International Space Station is to uh, provide us a way to learn what it's going to take for humans to live in space long term. And that covers everything from what uh, the absence of gravity does to astronauts' bones and muscles, and also uh, all the way down to more simple things like what it's like to drink a, a glass of water in orbit. Uh, the Dragon cargo ship that arrived at the station last week is carrying an experiment known as the capillary beverage, and that may change the way that astronauts drink in space. So this morning, we're going to learn more about it from the principal investigator of the experiment, Dr. Mike Weislogel, the vice president and senior scientist at the research for firm IRPI and a professor of mechanical engineering at Portland State University in Portland, Oregon. Mark? Greetings. Thanks so much for joining us. So, you know, astronauts have been drink, drinking through straws all these years. Um, I guess, are there, are there reasons to change that? Are there disadvantages to it? Well, there are certainly reasons to do it. I mean, uh, uh, you can imagine flavored drinks being reconstituted from powders being an absolute nightmare with gravity gone. And it's a real challenge problem and it's solved by having it done in a bag. It doesn't mean there aren't any hazards with uh, bags. You could easily hiccup with your hand holding one of the bags and you would squeeze the bag and send out a jet of liquid, you know, or you could, uh, you know, that kind of thing. There are, there are still some hazards with it, but confined to the galley, it's probably okay. With a cup, um, the astronauts would have an experience kind of like Earth, and uh, you'd be able to smell the aromas and you'd be able to experience that kind of bonding um, phenomena that takes place when you're drinking a cup of coffee with friends during a break, and, and that can relieve some of the stresses that are up there. So there's definitely, I guess, a, a psychological advantage to, to that experience, to, to uh, making that yes, connection. Yes, there is. There, there could also be one, for instance, picture a, uh, a long-duration mission where you use reusable cups instead of thousands of um, disposable drink bags. You, you, could, you could expect maybe a significant um, uh, savings in volume and mass also. But here, this is uh, largely about fun, and um, that was the idea about it in the first place. And um, I can tell you more about that if you want to, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's back up just a little bit. I know this builds on some earlier experiments that weren't, I guess, necessarily aimed at such a, a fun experiment, but uh, in, in capillary flow. Can you just kind of go back and explain a little bit about that for us? Okay. So we've been doing a lot of work in drop towers and low-gravity aircraft and shuttle experiments and things over the years. And recently, I'd say over the last eight years or so, we've had several a slew of experiments that the astronauts have performed as well as robotic experiments that, that all look at how liquids behave when gravity, the effects of gravity are small. So what we're doing is we're changing the shapes of containers and um, uh, in such a manner that the liquid moves to the right locations passively, uh, spontaneously. And it's driven by surface tension and wetting forces, but it's also crazy geometry. And we're developing the methods to do that so that you don't use pumps, you don't use centrifuge, you don't need gravity. The container determines its own bottom. And so where you know where the liquid is when it's time to use it. We're trying to make plumbing in space mundane instead of this aggravating, you know, scary actual process. It's a terrible thing to, to try to flush the toilet, for instance, and then where's the water? Or to, to, to drain the fuel tank, but where's the fuel? That kind of thing. To feed, to, to, to drink, to feed the mice with, uh, with water, at least, excuse me. But where's the water? That kind of thing. So we want that to be passive. We want that to be mundane. We want those challenges to go away. And these are and the coffee cup, for instance, or the, the beverage cup is an example of how we can do this in a day to day, you know, living in space kind of way. So that's just a very practical example of the research you've been doing, right? <laughs> I think so. What what spawned it was this um, the. Uh, the Italian espresso machine, the IS espresso that's going up, and the fact that there's these complex drinks that are up there, and then it just steamrolled from there, but uh, uh, and I know, a chance to get the space with something like this. Well, and I know um, astronaut Don Pettit created something that, that looked kind of similar uh, back when he was on the space station in, I think, 2008. Is that, you worked with him on that, right? Did that, that, that spark right. the idea here? Right. So one day he complained about drinking liquids from a bag and um, the, the feeling he felt associated with that. And uh, so we emailed him, hey, you could do this and that. And he, he uh, went over to the, he got some materials that were on Space Station and constructed this thing. And that demonstrated the, 
the phenomena and how you can replace the role of gravity with that of surface tension, wetting, and geometric shape of the container. And now the, the new one, though, is full-blown design. So now here we use the design models that we use for industrial design or commercial aerospace or NASA-related aerospace stuff, bring it all together in a, in a cup. And the <laughs> geometry is complicated, and, uh, but it can be 3D printed. And uh, here, we're going to dink around having fun absolutely with astronauts during mealtime, but we also t expect to get quality science from this to uh, verify and validate the models that we use. So it's really got this two-pronged um, uh, uh, effort, you know, to, to uh, well, see what's going on here. Well, I saw that the, the crew is actually going to demonstrate these, these cups today. So what, what exactly is the experiment? Is there data that they'll be collecting or just seeing if it works? Oh. Okay, I, I think they're unpacking things today. If they're actually experimenting, it's new, it's information to me if they're going to be using it today, but we're on two-hour call, so we're on the task list to be run at any time. But this is, this is an example of the cup, okay? So Got this it. thing is the 3D printed out of a transparent polymer, and it's been, it's been run through a series of tests to render it, you know, safe, safe to drink. It can be drank, and uh, we have go-ahead for all 50 drinks on the space station. And right now we're touch temperature drinks, but once we demonstrate it's safe, then we can maybe uh, pursue hot beverages like tea, coffee, things like this. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so, so this cup, okay, it, this is a Demitas. It's for a shot of espresso. Okay, there are six cups like this on the space station. Uh, this one is a small one. The other ones are a little larger, some with handles, some with different shapes. The astronaut will use a drink bag to fill the cup and then enjoy it at, in the galley just drinking like this. So the, the, uh, at once the connection is made with the lip, the entire contents can be drained into the mouth and it'll be pretty much like a drink experience. The nose will be centered over the, uh, over the opening so you'll get a nice whiff of whatever it is. It'll feel somewhat like or it'll be different. You'll adapt, but it'll have much that same feeling. The thing is, only 20% of the activities though are for fun in the galley. 80% of the effort is actually going to be out in the, in, the, um, in the laboratory with cameras, orthogonal views, HD visualization, downlink video, and we expect to get profile views of, of good mag magnified profile views of what the surface shape looks like, the drain rates, the flow rates, the stability, everything about it. And the point of that is to provide what we call validation and verification of all the models that we use. There are complex drinks. The wetting isn't perfect. All of these things that all will, act, will actually really improve our knowledge for designing systems for wastewater processing on space station. For drinks, perhaps, you know, how, how you process urine and brines and things downstream. Condensates, water, water supply, this kind of stuff. So it's actually going to be very valuable data to us, and we actually want to turn around and use it for advanced systems design. That's, that's our intention. Well, that's a great way to test it. It sounds fascinating. So we can't wait to, to see uh, the crew hopefully using them pretty soon and then definitely the results as they start to come in. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. We really appreciate it. And again, that was uh, Mark Wiselocal, who's the vice president and senior scientist at IRPI Research Firm. Thanks again. You're welcome.